I think belief is such a big part of in in like the decision to do it. So like back yourself in because you will get a bit of natural, whether it's imposter syndrome or um, doubting yourself, but you've really just got to stick fat and understand that the first, I got told that the first year or two will be an absolute grind um, and don't expect to reap the awards any sooner than that, basically, which is weirdly, I don't know if I'm a sicko, that's exciting for me. <laughs> like, get through it, like, like figure it out and then you'll start to reap the awards, I think. G'day guys, coming up on the show today is Michael Barker, or as we like to call him, Barks. He's the co-founder and director of Two Times Creative, a videographer and photographer who has recently started freelancing full-time. Previously, Barks has worked at Hoop City, Carlton Footy Club and the NBL working in all things digital. So think production, editing, social media, marketing, graphic design and more. He also has a newsletter, runs classes, uses his own socials to teach people how they can level up their digital knowledge. Lots to look out for today, including how you can work as a freelancer, how to break into the creative side of sports and skills you need to do so. Enjoy. I started volunteering. It's all about who you know in sport. Am I going to be calling the last 10 seconds of the grand final? You can connect with the interviewer. The hand goes up when they've got to make a decision. Having a network is one of the most important things you can do. I didn't necessarily follow my passion. I followed my curiosity. Once you've worked in sport, there's no going back. And then lo and behold, before I left, I got offered two. Hello and welcome to the Sports Grad Podcast, the ultimate guide to make it in the sports industry. I'm Ryan Walker. Joining me is the luscious Reuben Williams. We are two mates who met at Cricket Australian. Each week, we learn how people made it in sports. We tease out their career decisions, work habits, skills, and everything they do that makes them great. Also, you can learn how to get in, get promoted, and get thriving in the sports industry. Luscious. G'day, Ryan. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. I regret um, informing the listeners of this podcast a little bit of myself in the main body of this podcast, which people will soon find out. But uh, thank you for that. <laughs> Luscious. I mean, I'm pretty confident that's never been said on this pod. No. Uh, from all the words that I have described you as, luscious hasn't quite come up, but um, you are looking quite luscious today and those eyebrows are looking good. So a bit of a teaser for the main body, as you said. Uh, how's things though? What's, uh, what's been happening? Things are good. Things are good. We're in that awkward period where it's like, you know, short week after short week after short week. Mm. Uh, Easter's come and gone. We went to the Melbourne Mavericks season launch last night, the yeah. grand opening of a brand new professional sporting team in Melbourne in the uh, Suncorp Super Netball League. So that doesn't happen too often. So no. very, very cool to be a part of that experience. So uh, thank you to Shay Bolton-Brown and the and the Mavericks for, for getting us along to that. But um, outside of the netball hype, we are getting hyped to go to India. Yeah, we have rounded out a motley crew of park <laughs> cricketers to take on India's best in the in the subcontinent. We've got four IPL games lined up. We've got a, a whole bunch of other stuff lined up. Playing local cricket. Um, we'll see what else goes on. Sleeper trains, but um, <laughs> in a in a couple of weeks' time, our Indian content series is going to hit the surface. Ooh. Everyone, uh, get ready because you're not going to know what's hit it. Uh, no, it, it is very exciting. The sleeper train I'm most looking forward to. But um, now nah, for me, it's good to have the tour guide yep. uh, ready to lead the charge over in India. And uh, yeah, I've, I've never been there, so I'm pretty excited. Uh, and the Motley crew is going to be good as well. Should we release who the Motley crew are? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Will, Will Taylor? I'm not sure of his title. but uh, Social media producer yeah. for the, the Big Bash League. Absolute legend. Uh you, you can find him on, on most platforms, to be honest. He's doing some great content. And uh, Jack Lloyd, mm. podcast royalty, yep, has been on the show. He was the podcast producer once upon a time. Mm -hmm. um, I, would, I would almost go as far to say one of the golden childs of the Absol sports Absolutely. community. <laughs> uh, so it's very excited. And uh, is Chapo confirmed? Can he get I a mention on this pod? When we get off this call, we might uh, find out if he's in or not. Yeah. Or not. So, um, yeah, potentially five. Very, very exciting. So, uh, yeah, we're, we're pumped for that. Mm -hmm. um, there's lots happening as well. But community is flying as per usual. Yes. Lots of events coming up. Good wins. Absolutely. All right, let's get stuck into the wins. So shout out to these community members this week. First up, we have Braith Porteous with another win as a community engagement intern at the Cronulla Sharks. Big Ooh. win in the uh, in the NRL. So well done to you, Braith. Uh, Andrea Alfonso Putra has just got a role at Kojo as the front of house 
slash production assistant. So he's going to be joining the team of uh, Stephen Lord and and uh, their excellent agency. So well done to you, Andrea. Kate Penny has become a member and accreditation coordinator at Softball Australia, fantastic organisation. And Shauna Crosby has got a volunteer role with the Burley Bears Rugby League Club. So good mm. mix of um, codes, leagues, agency, yeah. NSOs. So the uh, community's going off at the moment. What, what a great week for them. Yeah. And then uh, in terms of events, there's always something going on. We've got Rookie Speed Networking happening tonight on the day that this podcast is released, the 8th of April. So speed networking style, 45 minutes, eight connections, get amongst it. Uh, Pro Speed Networking is coming up on Thursday, the 11th of April. And uh, our next rookie intake is not too far away. But before we welcome the next batch of community members, we're doing something that we've never done before. Mm. And we are having a community information night. So for all those people who have heard about the community, want to know more about it, we did an episode last week about everything that's involved. So you can go back and listen to that if you need. But if you want to come and chat to us directly and ask your questions mm. about what it's like to join. We are having a community information night on the 15th of April at uh, 7 p.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time. So get involved with that. There'll be a link yeah. in the show notes where you can register to join that Zoom call. And then for our members, as always, is Coffee Club each Friday morning. So if you want to catch up with members in person, then uh, get around that. But um, if you want to stay up to date with absolutely everything that's going on, all the wins, all the jobs coming up, all the events, Sports Grad Newsletter is where it's at. You'll find absolutely everything in one place all together. Sportsgrad.com.au forward slash newsletter is where you can get it. Amazing. Lots happening. Uh, it's it's crazy at the moment. But this is going to be a ripper episode. Enjoy this chat with Michael Barker. Are you aiming for a future in sport? Be ready to transform the industry. Study with Deakin and be prepared to redefine what it means to work in sport. Deakin's School of Exercise and Nutrition Sciences is ranked number one in the world. So if you want to turn your passion for sport into an impactful career, get ready to push the limits of exercise and sports science, sport coaching, sport development, sports management, nutrition sciences, physical education and more. Apply now to study at Deakin in 2024. Barks, welcome to the Sports Grab Podcast. Thanks, guys. Thanks for having me. Barks, I think this is the first time that we've had our podcast editor come in and join the show for the first time. So I welcome. I was thinking about it. Some might say it's part of my weekly routine to really <laughs> nail in and uh, dissect you guys' work. But um, <laughs> no, I, I think I think there might have been a few guests uh, before me, but uh, I'll, I'll take it. I'll take it. Well, some people might have come across to this episode as uh, legacy listeners of your previous podcast, Content Catch Up, which I've heard a few episodes of the past, which uh, is very, very good. And um I actually have an apology to make to you because I'm not sure if you check the Instagram messages of Content Catch Up, but I think, dead. but I think one day, probably late 2020, I saw you, what you guys were doing. I thought this is really really cool, and I messaged you guys and said, "Hey, we should do some like crossover or collab." And then someone wrote back saying, "Yeah, that's great." And then I forgot to follow up, and then I never followed up, and then it got too awkward to follow up, and I was <laughs> like, uh, "Like." No, I, rem- I remember that because I think your words were, are we doing similar things? And then whoever responded, it might have been Jules. Um, actually, I hope Jules is listening to this. He should be following my work. Um, <laughs> but he responded and clarified that we were a much less serious version of sports grad, so it had no competition. But who knows? We could have had a collab going we could have. years ago. Yeah. But well, that's my tardiness. I apologize. No, that's fine. Um, C- content and- collabs. Yeah, and I don't think anyone, for the listeners, I don't think anybody would have actually known what you're talking about. <laughs> Content catch-up had probably max 20 listeners, but it was good fun while it lasted. Hey, well, small things, well, big things grow from small things. Well, this is effectively the collaboration happening right now. True. Well, how many years yeah, did it take? Three years down the track. Jules, Jules ain't <laughs> yeah. here. Yeah, here we are. Mm. Usually, I like to pretend like our guest is an avid listener and they know how the show goes. So I don't need to make that joke no. with you. You know that we do our quick fire questions straight away. <laughs> uh, so for our beloved listeners, we'll, uh, we'll kick it off. Your first ever job. Uh, I think it was just a factory hand at Nature's Organics. Oh, not Nobody's going to know what that is, but I lived across the road from it. So uh, yeah, factory hand. Nice. And uh, what did you study at university? Building design. Uh, yep. Didn't, didn't help much with what I'm doing now, but wow. building design. Yeah. Uh, your favourite sporting moment? Uh, 2016 Cavaliers, NBA Cavaliers Championship, oh, yeah. LeBron winning one. 
for his hometown. That was best to have my life. Was that the three like fade away? Well, he no, didn't. that was the heat when he was playing. Yeah, that. no, that? that was when they came back from three one down mm. against the Warriors. Mm. Yeah, I remember. And I that. hated the Warriors at the yeah. That was crazy. LeBron's like on the floor crying. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Real man tears. It was a wonderful moment. Yep. yep. Um, what's your favorite interview question to ask of candidates, or that you like being asked in return? I think I'm a very uh, like people person. Like I think once you're in the interview process, all the skills questions would have been asked. So I'd probably something along the lines of maybe just go real like weirdly deep. Like what's your favorite thing about yourself? Mm. Just to get them, put yeah. them on the spot, and show a bit of personality, something like that. I reckon just to yeah, yeah weirdly deep. I think that is a. A Ruben, what's real, your favourite thing about yourself? That's a real curveball. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I don't know. know what I'd say to that. I like uh, that I've got a full head of hair. Yeah. It's kind of <laughs> yeah. promising for the future. Yeah. Yeah. I also think it's nice to you know, take the moment to, what what is it, yeah. Ryan? Yeah. I can tell you're thinking. Uh, oh, no. Favourite thing about myself? Yeah. Holy shit. <laughs> I saw you, blo- See? You'd get- I, you blocked out my S word the other day. Well, while he's thinking about swear. it, what's yours? Uh, sense of humour. Don't take myself too seriously, I think. Nice. Yeah. Ryan? Uh, we'll get the edit, editor to yeah, chop this up because this will be a quick I feel like kind of like humour over everything else yeah a yeah. little bit like you I like, yeah. can just take the piss a bit I think it does open it up to be a bit of an awkward silence though if you just have someone with low self esteem though yeah um, so I probably haven't you put yourself that. at risk there yeah what are you yeah. Yeah, head 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 head. Head. Head of hair, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. This is nice. <laughs> it is hearty, isn't it? <laughs> I like it. Yeah. I always get compliments from girls about my eyebrows because they're just like they're luscious. Yeah, they're thick. They're really thick. Like they need taming. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Interesting. Where do we get to? It's mine. <laughs> yeah. A uh, book or podcast you recommend? Um, that relates to work. Yeah. I think um, so. There's one in America, Five O Five Podcast. So if you are in the creative space, photographer, videographer. Um, they're three guys, actually four guys. One of them is the videographer of the Lakers. Um, they have just an unreal podcast that they've really built over the last year or so. It's pretty massive now. but um, And also more locally, just Dylan Friends. I think those type of – it doesn't have to relate to what I'm doing in work, but I love just hearing sort of the personal development and hearing from high-profile or success, quote-unquote successful people. Probably be the two. Yeah. Mm, that's terrific. Um, what's one platform that you use at work that you couldn't live without? This might be an obvious one for a videographer. Yeah, well, no, I'm going to say actually LinkedIn. Lately, LinkedIn is my, easily my favorite platform. Um, in terms of like, I don't know how much you guys think about this, but how you feel after using different platforms, LinkedIn is easily like the most positive. Like mm. you could say Instagram or something because I upload most of mm. um, our work there, but LinkedIn easily the most positive i think is that because you don't feel so bad about yourself when you're like doom scrolling on instagram and i think so and like mm. honestly i don't doom scroll as much on it because you sort of you get the real people you get the real what they're doing in their real lives mm. and i don't think you're i don't know what we're searching for it in what we're searching for in doom scrolling but whatever that is i don't find myself doing it mm. on linkedin so yeah well there's less like crap yeah you know, that's like not useful to you mm. like i feel like yeah. linkedin is you know, if you get not, if you take one thing from it, it's like you know what people are up to. Yeah. You know, like how people bring value. Yeah. So it's think, not going to be. Yeah. It's probably not going to be something negative. Either. No. Mm. Exactly. My issue with LinkedIn at the moment is that I follow a lot of people who are all giving out advice, and if you take on everyone's advice, it all cancels to zero. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's overwhelming. So it kind of leaves me overwhelmed. So it, I need to go do a cull, just listen to yeah. a few, select few. Yeah. It is it is funny because I think there's part of us that we all do like to give advice, but I am also conscious that there's so many um, variety of advice that you don't want to take one person's experience or what they're posting too literally or too much because it could impact. Mm. Mm. Don't know how how much you think it might not be right for mm. you. Yeah, the irony of that is I give out as much advice as anybody <laughs> else on the internet. <laughs> but yours is good advice. Yeah, I hope so. <laughs> I feel like it's getting more, uh, you know people literally sharing about their life like it, it was it, it used yeah. to just be like professional platform mm. and like it's there to find like leads to work and stuff like yeah i feel like mm. now i don't know i feel we do it a fair bit but just like share what you're up to yeah in mm. your life and yeah it's it can involve work but a lot of it doesn't need to i think it's I think, going towards that way yeah i think that's what i like about it too you're not it probably a good way to put it is I'm not thinking about what I have to post on LinkedIn. You just sort of, mm. I want to post that on LinkedIn because I'm already yeah. doing it. Mm. Yeah. And there's less stress about like being trolled 
as well. Yeah, well, maybe that's <laughs> why we like there's not yeah. as many bots yeah. or safe, safe bullies space. out there. Yeah. Yeah. I reckon that, that's a really good call. Like, mm. I reckon I stress more about the Instagram photo I put up because it's like my mates are definitely going to see it. Whereas like LinkedIn, it's like it's a different audience. So yeah. I don't I don't really think about yeah. it as much. People, I think we all just mm. take social media too seriously. Just yeah. as an overall, Probably just right, post yeah. whatever you want to post. Just need to stop like, caring. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Like, stop whatever. caring. I love when we go down rabbit holes and the quick fire <laughs> questions. <laughs> Last one before we uh, get into a box. Uh, 30 minutes to pick anyone's brain. Who would it be? I think it just has to come back to LeBron. I, I, I like, King. yeah, I just... I don't, uh, the funny thing is, I don't even know what I'd ask him. <laughs> yeah. Like, what I'd have him there and he'd be like, yeah, this is unreal, but like, yeah, what do you ask him? But mm. yeah, mad on a basketball and NBA and sport. And um, I always barrack for the legends of ever like the, the sport. So I'd have to go LeBron or something like that. Well, Barks, people know you as the editor of this show, but they might not know that you actually have a life outside of sports, <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> um, tell us about what you're doing with your, your business and, um, kind of things you're working on and how that kind of came to fruition yeah so i guess um studied in builder design which has nothing to do with what i do these days which i guess um to wrap it or recap it it's, uh, i'm a sports videographer and photographer that runs my own business um that's co-founded by my twin brother darren i'm a twin ryan by the way <laughs> <laughs> i found out know. two days ago <laughs> well, <laughs> been working with him for months yeah <laughs> so the brand is called two times creative which is ironic because that's basically the initial marketing strategy that there's two of us so <laughs> you clearly have a d- dive too deep into our brand um two times creative but yeah. um yeah so these days it's i'm literally only three months in so i only went out on my own uh, at the start of this year and darren um he it does his bits and bobs in a freelance capacity, whereas I'm doing it full time. So um, it's unreal. It's a real good learning experience, and um, week to week, everything's different. And I'm still figuring it out as I go. But a bit of an overall nice, recap. Nice. Yeah. And so, how? Let, let's go right back to building design. Yeah. To freelance <laughs> videographer. Yeah. Because there's a fair bit of stuff that I'm sure <laughs> happened in between. Yeah. Um, your first videography gig or when you first picked up a camera, when when did that happen and when did you realise this is something that I, I love? So none of what inspectors, local basketball, um, it's the league below the NBL now. It's the NBL one, but back then it was the Siebel. Um, literally, I don't know how it came across, but I had like my iPhone 6 or 7, no, whatever it was back then. <laughs> and I literally filmed their games and made these little um, highlight reels, which I actually found uh, the other month because I was reflecting on it for an hour and two times creative content um but that was my first ever videography job but um i don't know where the passion came from because it started with video editing so like we never picked down and i both had never picked up a camera we literally edited nba mixtapes or highlight reels which is probably relating to my lebron fandom um and then that led to a curiosity to get on the other end of the lens of like filming photography so yeah but first ever job was iphone and filming local basketball games so gotta start somewhere Mm. And then how did, how did that lead into your first full-time job as a creative? I think it just like a big theme of mine was always curiosity. So I think I realized that, yeah, I was working my nine to five sort of architecture job and it was great, like really enjoyed it. But then I'm just like, it's not really what the passion is. And in all honesty, I actually cho- chose building design as a path to follow to try to be different to my twin brother. He chose graphic design. I'm like, I can't do graphic design building design has design in it like it's similar so it was never something that i think i actually wanted to do it was just i had to pick something it was just the inner rebel in you trying to like be different be yeah. different yeah, yeah. be different and now creating created a brand based on being the same yeah. so, <laughs> full circle <laughs> um but that that's how it's well, so your, your oh. first full-time videography gig was with carlton footy club so Essentially, so I had some entry level positions at um, there was this place called Game Face. Game Face covered local footy leagues, and I um, edited their footage. So I, I was never behind the camera. Job popped up for Carlton Football Club just through Seek as it does, and um, not on the sports grad. Um, not yet. Not, not yet. Then. <laughs> yeah, it, it is now. For it anyone is now. Yeah. The job. Segue. Um, and then, yeah, I was. It, it's sort of funny saying it now, but it's sort of a, uh, a kudos to the people at Carlton because I came in there and I'm like, I want your video producer role, but I've never picked up a camera. So that's a bit of a, a factor to consider <laughs> with your <laughs> recruitment. Um, and the, guy, the, the team there were great. They literally said to me that they've always been one to hire based on the person, not the skill set. I'm like, great, because I've got no skills. I <laughs> only uh, edit videos. But, um, yeah, so the video producer at Carlton, I was there for f- a bit over four years. That was the first 
I guess, proper non-entry level mm. job in, in this space. Nice. Yeah. How did you like learn though? Like you went into a job, you didn't really have the skills. What did that look like from L- literally the first few months? Yeah, literally um, everyone around me and uh, teaching myself. So the wonderful, um, I guess, University of YouTube as people talk about it. But again, pe- uh, massive appreciation to the people at Carlton, like the senior video producer above me, um, Jonathan Strangio, he won't be listening, but he's a legend. Jules, we know of Jules. Um, just people like that and the, 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 the people you surround yourself with. And um, during my time at Carlton, I also did a fair bit of freelance videography where you just sort of have to learn because you're getting these cool opportunities and you go from your phone to your first camera and it's all self-taught. So, um, yeah, definitely didn't study or anything in this area, which I think I, I try to use to my advantage because it's not a hindrance. And I think a lot of people sort of think if I didn't study in it, then am I going to mm. be an expert in it or can I make a living from it like you can yeah we come across a lot of people who hold themselves back from potentially landing jobs because they don't feel like they're quite ready Mm. and these people think that you know i need to be able to do say 70 or 80 percent of the job description before i can even think about putting my hat in the ring to then maybe have a chance i'd love to know like what percentage you thought you were at for the job that you're applying for and then how did you feel coming out of the interview did you think now that they're going to give it to me despite only being able to do x mm. percent or are we like gee this will be a long shot well i mean the the second one i, I thought it'd be a long shot but to be honest and like everyone's journey is different i don't think i'd encourage this but i remember saying to the digital manager there at the time who i was interviewing with i said look I'm, I'm prepared to do like a trial for free like i'm not expecting to get the position to be paid and that was probably just my eagerness but also awareness that i don't have any prior experience filming with a camera like the main job but um, again fortunately enough for me um, they were prepared to hire so I want to teach them on the spot and pay them but yeah I don't know like it, it, I'm not saying go out there and offer to do it for nothing but certainly I do think um, we've all done it in this space like in a sense we've, there's so many of us that have done these free jobs and whether that's what I'd recommend you doing I, I do think there is a place to do it based on everyone's situation. Mm. And what, um, like in terms of what you're capturing, is that just to go on Carlton's channels, like social content or like what, what did that look like? Yeah, so um, I sort of when I walked through the doors of the Carlton Football Club, I, I didn't really understand how there could be three full-time video producers. And I know that sounds ignorant, but you sort of think like how much there is to do and um, everything from social media to game coverage to servicing mm. all the other departments, whether it's big commercial communities, such a, a big one these days. Um, and literally every department of a football club um, and including game day and the, the general getting to games and kicks, handballs, marks, like all those type of all those type of stuff. So like literally everything. Crazy. Yeah. I can detail a bit more if you no, want. No, no, that's good. I think um, we were talking to somebody last night about con- like being in content digital teams mm-hmm. and having um, the commercial teams sell in – different types of assets and whatnot. Did, what, what was that like from having to go from capturing a, you know, a footy camp to go and getting commercial content for partners and things like that? Is that kind of what you were involved in as well? Yeah, but like, again, because I was so raw to it, I sort of just took it in my stride. Like I enjoyed the quote unquote boring shoots because I'd never done it before. So yes, the footy um, focused videography and shoots were fun, but if it was like a boring interview with a, a corporate individual just talking to them like i still was learning thing like i still got Boring something corporate. out of it yeah, yeah. <laughs> no offense to the people that do the, those type of jobs yeah. shout time, out to the corporates yeah, the corporate. yeah. <laughs> no of course but again because i was so raw to it i just sort of yeah was trying to be a sponge i guess nice and at, at what point do you think you started to feel com- uh, confident in your entire role because Looking at where you started with, you know, not operating the camera to where you are now, where you're working for yourself and got no one to work under, I'm sure you wouldn't say that you, you're finished learning. But like, at what point did you start to feel like, all right, I'm really comfortable in my ability here? I don't know. I think, <laughs> um, like, I think, I mean, to go out on your own and like sort of start or co-found a business with your brother, you have to back yourself and be totally confident in your abilities. But um, probably honestly, not until like the last couple of years um, where I really start to started to realize like i think i've got a hang for a lot of things but 
in saying that, like every day I'm totally aware that I don't know a lot of um, things that perhaps I should know at this stage in my career as a videographer or photographer. So um, I'm massive on asking questions and learning off people, even if you think they're stupid questions, like literally like last night I gave that presentation to about 20 photographer, beginner photographers. And there's a question that was asked to me then that I realized I actually didn't know. So I put it back on this guy that I was supposed to be teaching. And I'm like, actually, no, like, what is that? So just like being, don't try to pretend you don't know. I mean, don't try to pretend things you don't know is my sort of thing and curiosity sort mm. of goes hand in hand but yep. yeah well let, let's um talk more about the the freelance uh work that you're doing at the moment yeah firstly um for those who might be thinking if about doing this sort of stuff for themselves in the future when did you start to get the itch and when did you start to think that freelance was more the type of work and or routine or mix of things that you would prefer so after my time at Carlton, I was head of digital for a small um, like startup basketball brand, Hoop City, and that sort of um, that was great because I got to sit in on meetings and be a part of a lot of um, different things that I wasn't a part of at Carlton because obviously Carlton is a massive brand and company compared to a small business, and that probably fast tracked my curiosity um, again because it sort of like taught me a fair bit, but also it was just like I think doing my own thing is I honestly do think it was always a bit of an itch I had to scratch but um it made me think I sort of want to give this a go sooner rather than later because when we were developing two times creative that was never we never meant that to be me doing it full time it was going to be a freelance thing so yeah like probably as recent as last year or we created it last year maybe six months before that so it was sort of just jumping in when that time felt right. Like I didn't want to wait till it felt like the perfect opportunity to do so. So mm. I just started planning to do it and said, Darren, sorry, spanner in the works. I'm doing it full time. So <laughs> you're not expected to come with me, but yeah, yeah, this is what I'm doing. Yeah. Nice. Nice. Um, speaking of the freelance life, yep. the, the life, life you lead, what does it, um, it look like? What, what was a typical week? look like for you because you work across a lot of different clients Mm. how do you sort of structure your week so it it varies week to week like one of my goals when i first made this decision was to get uh two or three retainer clients so um so i wasn't relying purely on ad ad hoc things to pop up to fill my week and month like i wanted some consistency and obviously fortunate enough for this company sports grad to come along to work with you guys well, so Melbourne United technically, oh, no, they're not technically, it's all right, you can take <laughs> you it. You meant to say, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't lie. Um, <laughs> transparency over here. So Melbourne United, I guess the way it worked, um, so their season has just finished, but I did two days a week with them, video editing, and then game day was the photographer for them, or one of their photographers. So that was like a sort of retainer arrangement, but you guys were the first actual contract agreement mm. where we're doing this yeah, thing, which... Um, which honestly, I said to you guys, was unbelievable because like that was, I mean, pretty early on for someone who's just gone out on their own. So mm. it was, um, yeah, kudos to sports <laughs> Um But no, like really appreciate it and it's been great. And um, probably now that the United season is finished, again, I want to go back to that goal of getting one more retainer. And the rest is literally just um, ad hoc freelance jobs, but all of it has come back, all of it has come from past relationships or um, referrals. So probably a nod to networking and it's all it is literally all about who you know but week to week it could be anything from cover covering live games soccer did my first a-league game over the weekend or um go back to my boring corporate um (laughs) thing it could be interviews and that type of videography so i'm not i'm still in the process of um sort of figuring out how much you niche down and how much you say yes and how much you say no to so whether you do just want to do sport and athletes which is what Darren and I have decided mm. is sort of our niche. Um, we, we describe it as high performance brands and people. That's who we want to work mm. for. But um, I'm also a believer of saying yes to other types of jobs. Like, for example, I literally did a shoot with our celebrant uh, three weeks ago where I put a mic on her and we got some unreal behind the scenes content. And that taught me a lot. Also, major respect to any wedding videographer because I don't know how they do it. <laughs> I spent two <laughs> hours there and that was enough. Um, but yeah, anyway, it, it's figuring it out and it's all about learning as, as you go. Yeah. Yep. Well, um, for anyone's perspective who's thinking about going freelance and wondering like, why would anyone choose me? I can give my perspective of why we chose you. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> right. um, 
You can clip this up for a video. Yeah, so. Well, number one, like, can you do the job? It's had seen your stuff. It was excellent. And two, uh, would you be good to work with? And having seen your content catch up stuff and also just admired your willingness to go out on your own, having been through that ourselves, we could relate to that. And I thought, okay, well, this is, you know, Mike gets it. Mm. This will be fun. So for anyone who's like, oh, how am I ever going to find a client? That's kind of what's going through a client's head. Yeah. Yeah. Um, have you done the math on um, like how many retainer clients do you need to make a full-time wage for yourself? Because I'm, I'm picturing that there are some people out there thinking freelance is, is too hard. I'll never be able to earn the same amount of money that I can. I won't have the same sort of comfortable lifestyle. Mm. But realistically, how many retainer clients do you think a freelancer needs to be to get by? I, I don't think it's – I think it's dependent on – I, I can't answer that in terms of how many retainer clients, but I've definitely worked it out of how how much monthly revenue I need to be making to mm. equal what I was making at my past job. So I will like easily say, and I'm quite transparent with this, I, I, when I went out on my own, whether that was um, not ignorance, but just belief in myself, I, I totally believe that I could, not easily, but I could make more money than I was earning by, by doing my own work. And that's taking into tax everything else that you've got to learn along the way. But I think... People should be not surprised, but if you believe in your skills and what you deliver as an overall product, that you can charge a lot more than you probably think, um, and not in the sense of exploiting it just to charge more than more than you think, but it's what you're worth. Um, so for me, like I can easily say, so uh, I sort of got my targets um, to equal what my salary was in a full time world last year, but um, already three months in, I can see how that can grow and grow from there. And um, on that, probably going back to my point before about not pretending to know what you don't know, I'm looking to invest in a business coach to help me achieve that. So to answer your question, I'm not sure how many retainer clients. For me, I think three would be a good number or two to three. And then the rest can be covering um, like still the type of jobs that are um, every week you cover Melbourne Victory game or mm. Melbourne United game where that's not technically a retainer, but it's consistent work with a consistent client. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So theoretically, like some people might be thinking, I've got to go out and find so many different people mm. to get me for all these different jobs. But if you get three big fish, <laughs> that can kind of I think so, from, yeah. from my experience. And obviously when we say retainer client, that could vary anything from three hours a week to mm. 10 hours a week. So it, it, it is hard. You could have six retain- retainers or you could have one. Yeah, you know what I mean. So, it's hard. It all varies. Yeah, yeah. No, nice. nice. What um, what have you learned so far? First few months. Any any sort of big learnings that you can pass on to those who might be thinking about going down a, a similar route? I, I keep saying it. Just don't pretend to know what you don't know. Like I know nothing about business. I happily say that. Like I back my skills in about videography, photography. I know how to produce a piece of content that solves the client's problems or whatever I'm trying to achieve. But when it comes to uh, lead generation, getting um, new clients, getting uh, eyeballs seen on the type of um, clients or people that you want seeing your work, I don't know. Like you, you got to be aware of what you need help with and invest back in. Um, investing back into your business is a big one, not for just physical things like for me, like camera equipment. Like, yes, I got to do that because that's that's part of it. But um, a business coach, I've, I spoke to like a um, bit behind the scenes, like I've met three business coaches slash mentors. One was like a high performance coach. Um, just like trying to see what things will actually help you because if you are a full-time freelancer, um, people say there is a lonely element. I'm fortunate I've got Darren and whatever the support network around me, but it is quite lonely. So I think be aware of um, people that you can have in your corner to um i guess help your weaknesses any other learnings it's probably just um i don't know i i I think belief is such a big part of in in like the decision to do it so like back yourself in because you will get a bit of natural whether it's imposter syndrome or um doubting yourself but you've really just got to stick fat and understand that the first i got told that the first year or two will be an absolute grind um and don't expect to reap the awards any sooner than that basically which is weirdly i don't know if i'm a sicko that's exciting for me like get through it like like figure it out and then you'll start to reap the rewards i think yep i know this is this is a a very real consideration for a lot of people who are thinking of making a bit of a career change but what did your partner think when you said i'm leaving 
the employer life. I'm going to go work for myself and see how it goes. Yeah, uh, don't do it. No. <laughs> she, no, no, no. She was like totally appreciative of like I was so fortunate, Elise. Shout out, Elise. You should be listening. Um, yeah, she was – I had no – there wasn't even a thought that uh, – I think she just fully believes in – me and my decisions that it wasn't even a, th- a real thought. Like obviously you touch base and talk about it. But um, yeah, to be real, like that was my biggest priority. Like I never want to be a hindrance on my half of the financial situation in our marriage. Like I don't want to um, for her to ever feel that. And it's three months in, like I can easily say in the first month or two that we've had to think about um, money more than we ever have but we've been so fortunate that that's probably a reflection of what we're used to it's not anything dire or anything um but yeah it's, it's a tough situation and um for, i was fortunate but um yeah that's i try to use that as motivation like i don't want to ever be that hindrance on um us focusing too much on that side mm. of things yeah in the early days i always just tell myself you know if the worst situation ever did eventuate <laughs> Thankfully, there's a couch in mum and dad's house I can go and <laughs> yeah. crash on or like literally, you know, yeah. into other parts of the world where like, you know, they don't even have that. It's like, okay, well, yeah. you know, yeah. who am I to not have a go at chasing my dreams if, you know, the worst situation is probably better, 10 times better than That's such a, good lot, perspective. A, lot of, yeah. a lot of people live through. Because yeah. you were so right, like the worst case scenario is not that bad. No, no. In comparison. No, exactly. <laughs> no. Do you reckon that is the biggest challenge you face sort of having that that worry or is a, a, a is, does it not really concern you too much the financial risk of it all i, I think you've got to sort of not care like <laughs> i think that's part of your mindset right like i, I think everyone's different like it, what works uh, for me isn't going to work for everybody else but i think if you're too caught up in that then you're probably already starting off on a back foot like if you're going to do it just you got to do it properly like there's no point um doing that and then every night sort of worrying about your finances because for me particularly I didn't as I said I didn't study in anything I always chose this field for an enjoyment factor so you sort of just got to keep pushing with that and like I'm literally making a living off what was a hobby or still is a hobby so um for me no but totally understand and Mm. empathy to people that obviously that is a factor but again like I hate all the cliche things about you only do these type of things once. Like you only really have the one life to do it, but it's so true in a way. Mm. Give yeah. it a go. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, ignorance is bliss sometimes yeah. in those situations. Yeah. Um, Don't think know, about it. Yeah, like if you ever, <laughs> oh, particularly like, like how old are you? Like I'm about to turn 30. Like if you can, yeah, yeah, so you like, I'm sure like you're similar. Like a lot of your friends are probably a similar stage of life, getting married, buying houses, you know becoming managers at law firms or banking firms mm. or whatever and they're like everyone's starting to move on with their career and if, if you're just trying to start a business scratch whilst your closest circle around you is like yeah you know, mm. starting to mature heavily yeah you end up in that comparison hamster wheel which uh can be hard to get off sometimes yeah totally have you both talked about like this to your listeners about you starting how you guys went about yeah. it when you first started probably not not too much. No, not really. No, I mean, like future we've, episode. We've, yeah, we've shared we've shared our journey in mm. patches, but we've probably never talked about like we've probably never answered the same questions we're asking you. <laughs> yeah. Well, quickly on the financial thing, like, did you worry about that at all? Um, Putting this back on you. Yeah. Good job, Michael. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we can cut this if you want. Well, Editor. Like, no, 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 no. I mean, like, yes, like it was yeah. a concern. Um, I mean, our situations are different because we started at different points. So mm. um, in 2020, I got made redundant and um, and the podcast took off from there and Ryan kept going at Cricket Australia, but I was kind of out. Mm. And um, I was fortunate that with the redundancy came a, a package and so I had a bit of a runway. Yeah. Um, but to get by in the first little period, I had um, a two-day-a-week contract job where I did some digital commercial work for them. And um, my biggest regret is not <laughs> saying yes to a few more days of work a week because <laughs> it would have been nice to keep that going. But um, I ha- had that kind of propping me up. But eventually I got to a point where they asked me to work five days a week for them. And I was like, well, if I do that five days a week, then sports grad's going to fall off. And like, you know, mm. what I really care most about is sports grad. This is February 2021, so probably seven months into the journey at this point. And um, and this job was offering me six figures, literally twice as much as I'd just 
come off at uh, Cricket Australia. And um, I was like, Jesus, that would be really <laughs> nice right now <laughs> because <laughs> sports grad, I think the, Ooh, commu- yeah. the community, like our first revenue stream had only been up for two months at that point. Yeah. And it was like, you know, 14 bucks a month for about 50 people. <laughs> and um, and uh, I said no to that. I wanted to go and do sports grad. And um, and then almost serendipitously, a couple of days later, uh, a week later, uh, we got approached about um, some investment. And I was like, yes. Yeah. <laughs> I need that right now. <laughs> yeah. Um, but that to actually get the money in the bank took about eight months. Yeah. So there was about eight months of like really scraping mm. the barrel. Yeah. Where um, like I knew absolutely every single dollar, whether it was digital or cash in hand, that yeah. was that was going through me. And one of the things that made it easier to get by was um, was COVID, because I couldn't wasn't tempted to go out or do yeah. anything anywhere. Yeah. I had like a very routine week, and I'd also moved back down to Lawn to just kind of lock myself in, and um. I was renting out a beach house that cost 400 bucks a week, which was twice as much as what I was paying in Melbourne. (laughs) (laughs) And I was paying myself, I think, $500 a week out of the business. Yeah. And then I would make, if if there was a football game on that weekend, playing in the country football league down there, I'd get 150 bucks cash. So I was making $650 a week. (laughs) And it was grim. So Mm. for eight months, I did that to get by until we finally got the investments and could... Yeah. Go back to my entry level mm. salary. But e- even that's like such great perspective for me because I'm so lucky. Like mm. I feel like I haven't experienced um and it, maybe it's ahead of me. Maybe it'll skyrocket downwards, you know. <laughs> but like I have not had um any major challenges yet or anything like that. So I do feel very fortunate. And I think when you say like you go out by yourself or start a new business, you can to what you said you had two days a week, you can literally tell yourself I'm not going to do this until I've got something locked in. Mm. So you're not five days a week sitting there thinking, what am I going to do? Don't do it. I know I previously said just sort of do it when you feel the moment's right. That's probably not the most pra- practical <laughs> thing to do. But um, yeah, you can literally tell yourself, I have, I'm have. i going to get three, two days of work locked in or some mm. sort of retainer before I start it. So you can find the middle ground. Yeah, totally, yeah. totally. And then like that's probably a hard end of the spectrum. Like I'm, you know... I don't mind risk, <laughs> um, but there are definitely more risk averse ways you can go yeah. about it. So you can yes. you can gently ease into it if you need to. Yeah. yeah, I remember like when like when I left CA, I like I probably wasn't ready to leave yet. Or we went. I wasn't ready to leave because like as you said, it sort of took a little while for everything to fall into place. So I remember I got like a you know when you leave you get paid out your annual leave and all that kind of crap. And I remember it was like, it was like five grand or something total. It was like my pay for the month or something like that. And then I realized that like, you know, it's going to have to last me like three months. Yeah. <laughs> and then I remember also, um, yeah, I just remember like early on, like obviously didn't pay ourselves anything. And it was like, it was literally like, you're not going to the pub. Or like, you're not, you're not yeah. doing that stuff. And it's mm-hmm. kind of like the, the thing you mentioned of like the hamster wheel. It's like a lot of my mates are out doing that stuff, but it's like you just have to make that conscious choice. Yeah, it's like the long game. Like everyone talks about the long yeah. game. Mm. And you just, you know, yeah, it's pretty hard and it can be demoralizing sometimes, but I think the having that end goal in mind kind of gets you through it. Yeah. And very lucky to have a, a good partner. In that <laughs> as well. Like, yeah. yeah. It's- lo- love's very supportive through that. Uh, so like you just get through it yeah you get through it you have to sacrifice something there yeah you do otherwise I mean mm. I'm, it's not all easy no it's not it's mm. it's also just a side note um, how incredible like it's incredible how many things come from COVID or COVID mm. helped bring on COVID yeah. too yeah. <laughs> I always say bring it back I like it <laughs> <that. laughs> I'm, I'm a natural hermit I, I was thriving oh, I, <laughs> you know what they should do insane. they should be like every three months it's we're going to have a snap lockdown <laughs> you're gonna find your passion. You're we're gonna, gonna find have a your new mu- career. Yeah, like every one one month and every three, we're gonna have a snap lockdown. We're inside for a month, <laughs> yep. can't do anything. It's just like, oh, how good! I, I feel he, like people he, might not get around that. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I, I'm definitely in the min- minority of that. But <laughs> hey, if why anyone, not? anyone who needs like a forced circuit breaker, yeah, like, there the, you go. Love the circuit breaker. We're it up. definitely helped us. Yeah. I reckon. Well, so literally, so many people you talk to about startups or new ventures 
how often do they say COVID? It's mm. like mm. like 80% of the time. Uh, yeah. I remember like a couple of times for us, like, uh, you know, on, on a weekend, we'd like spend up most of the day just like planning stuff and, mm. you know, and it was like, well, what else are you going to do? That's mm. So it, like you may as well just use yeah. the time to build something. Isn't that you know? cool though? Because like there's part of us that all we actually need to like chase a dream, hobby or career is time. Yeah. That's literally, literally all it was at literally. the end of the day. You just need time to think and be bored and nothing to distract yourself and be yeah. like, oh, yeah, I'm going to change my life. I just mm. need a bit of time to think about it. It's, yeah. it's in there. Because like the whole reason you don't do something is because other things are in the way of it. Mm. Yeah. So if you just clear everything out. <laughs> Easy done. Prime example so, yeah. right here with was, the lawn getaway. Well, so, so many people, <laughs> like so many much more successful people than us, talk about how focus is like the number one yeah. thing that makes a difference. And... Um, when I was doing sports grad just as a YouTube channel uh, by myself for three years, it got went from zero to 30 subscribers in three years because I was doing everything else but sports yeah. grad. And so in that time, like I was a very social person. I was playing footy and cricket and often like the preseason would, would overlap. So there's like four nights of your week. You're like you're out doing sport training. You're playing on the weekend. You're probably going out on Saturday night. Sunday, you're probably recovering. And then you go back into the working week and then it's like – well, geez, like unless I like work on sports grad after I get home from footy training at like 9 p.m., like, yeah. you know, when am I actually ever going to do this? Yeah. Never. So now it's like, like I would love to go back and play a full season of footy or cricket, but I just know that like what that takes away. And I know the compounding effect of what, you know, every Saturday, um, what you know, if I take eight, 10 Saturdays away in a row, what the compounding effect of that would be yeah. in the future. I, I get you, but it's so hard because – I like I relate to that with basketball. Like I miss playing basketball two day two days a week, and you need that growing up because it's mm. unreal. Like it, like you stop playing and you're just like, oh, like how good are those times? But I get what you're saying. Like yeah. with a bit more time, you block out, you make that decision not to go out or play footy or whatever. Mm. All of a sudden, I think about this too. Like I could have picked up a camera years ago, and where would I be today? But you don't know. Like it's all no. it's all hindsight or whatever. You're not going to know exactly. Back on track. We're on the run show here. We're going around. We're going around. Kind of started yawning there, didn't we? <laughs> <laughs> got a bit deep. <laughs> Who's got COVID? I think, I think we're up to uh, skills and experiences. Yeah. Uh, yep. You know, w- what are the essential skills that you need to, to do what you do? Well, I guess at the heart of it, you need to know how to operate a camera. So videography and photography are obviously, like, I always think about, like, at the end of the day, not everyone has a job based off skills, but I'm very fortunate that, in a way that that's what my job is based off it but in terms of what other jobs i mean what are the skills i need to do the job i don't know like i don't know how to answer it because i'm not sure there's anything like there's nothing special about me like i learned how to pick up a camera and create videos and naturally by repetition you learn how to put together content and solves people's needs and fortunately these days like no matter what you do no matter what industry you're in you need content um I guess the biggest things that I think have always helped me is that same curiosity word, communication. I feel like my best skill in business is literally communication, which sounds funny because it's based. my business is based off two other skills in videography and whatever. But communication, um, yeah, and, and asking questions. Like I, I needed to learn what I'm doing now off other people. I didn't have any other choice. So um, they're not skills. Like that's what I mean. Like I don't know how to answer because they're not skills. They're just like – like traits, I don't know, mm-hmm. but you can't really teach that. Like, I don't know. Yeah. So, say when you're capturing photos at the NBL on the weekend, are there any particular things that you're doing by way of photography techniques that you've learned recently that say you weren't doing three, four years ago? I mean, absolutely. Like, um, like even so, yesterday, so a bit of insight. So, I gave a presentation. I referred to it before about. Um, it was like 20 young photographers uh, who want to shoot for the South Metro Junior Football League. So they want to get in amongst the junior footy and learn photography. And I found myself in a position where you, you'd never think you would be because, again, I, I'm by no means an expert in this field. But as I was doing the presentation, I think a massive part of what I've learned to do is just try to differentiate myself. Like in photography and videography, there are rules. There are things you're meant to do by the book to make a good video or photography. But because I didn't study them, how was I going to stand out? And I found the more I tried to like break rules or do things differently, the more I felt my skills like progressing. So like trying to do things differently, um, testing out things. So I don't know, like a real, I guess, practical example is at the basketball every week. 
you've probably seen on TV and I sort of have this running joke with um, my brother Darren that I hate the baseline, just the baseline can piss off because every photographer, particularly in American sports, are all lined up at the same spot. They're all in the baseline and they spend the whole whole game there. So how many different shots or variety of photos are you going to tell a story if you're just sitting in the one spot? So something as simple as training my mind to be like, go where people aren't going. That lend to um, capture moments when nothing's happening. So if everyone's looking at the ball down the other end because something's happening, what's happening behind play? Like maybe someone on their 150th game is like exhausted and whatever and no one's taking a moment or capturing that moment. That could be the best photo you've taken all year because it's capturing the story of how hard he or she worked during that um during that game so just things like that and that all comes from repetition i don't think it's it's something that i think of now as i'm going to games but it's certainly not anything about oh make sure my settings are set to this like i don't really think i know how to operate a camera obviously but i don't really think a certain setting on a camera can change too much that might sound ignorant but hmm. I remember michael wilson like his biggest piece of advice was just shoot yeah. yeah, it sounds like that yeah. is a yeah. similar thing to yeah. what you're saying. Like, just go out and have a go and see what works for you, and you sort of learn and, and find yeah. your way. There's a reason why so many people say just do things and try it because I think repetition is like the best thing you possibly do. And I, th- I feel like it's funny because, like, I, I said I love like the Dylan Friends podcast where you hear these people talk, but when you actually put it down, to a lot of the things are just the people, people say the same things and they say it for a reason. So I think yeah, it's it's exactly what Michael said. Just you got to do it, um, and you'll you'll figure out the art form, I guess, if you do it more and more. Last bits of advice for any potential creatives who are thinking about following your footsteps, mm. other than just get started. Is there any tactical bits of wisdom that you can impart? I think I said this on our beautiful platform LinkedIn. Um, you take I love a, your content on LinkedIn, by yeah, the way. It's good. Mm, Thank you. It's yeah. fine. Michael Barker. Um, <laughs> we'll get to plugging it. Yeah, okay. So. <laughs> We're in a segment for that. Um, <laughs> I've lost much. No, uh, take it seriously. Like, I think um, if you are a creative or you want to get into photography and videography, you're probably similar to me in that you you probably realize that it's pretty cool we get to make this skill a job and this job never – it was never a full-time job many years ago. Um it is bloody cool that we get to do it as a job, but take it as seriously as you would um, if you want to be a lawyer or these, quite unlike like the corporate or the, the the more typical industries that you'd probably be told to aim for as a kid um, in their career. So take it seriously and that just means um, invest your time into it, learn it properly and do things as you would and don't treat it as like, um, even though it is a hobby at the end of the day, treat it like any other normal serious job. That's probably one bit. And I've said it time and time again, but don't pretend to know what you don't know. It's something that I always go back to because you need people around you to help you. You're not going to know everything. Love it. Mm. Um, lastly, plug your handles like you just did. Uh, and also you do a, you run a newsletter. Yes, yes. Tell us about that as well. So the newsletter is something, so I guess at the core of the business, we offer videography and photography services, but um, something that's sort of come up on um, both of Darren and I's radars is that we do really enjoy helping other young, particularly young or beginner photographers or videographers. So we want to create a space where we can um, help them realise they can do it as a career or make some money for it or take that take it a bit serious, um, more serious than they currently are. So we've got a weekly newsletter. We basically rotate weeks that we uh, pick a theme. Um, it might be on a, for example, I might talk about my presentation last night. Like we try to keep it more um, almost like a diary entry, but providing, making sure it's, it's real life value that these young creatives can actually take. So that's on our website. So two times creative, you can find everything we're talking about today. Uh, there's a link for the newsletter. Um, socials is two x creative. Times creative was taken, unfortunately, but it's the same <laughs> thing. So two x creative on all handles. Um, Instagram as in T W O. Yes, T W O X creative. Yep. Thank you. Um, YouTube as well. So we, YouTube is something that I actually want to try to get a weekly video out because I do think long form. That's where we're going back. Two, that's just a side note. Um, yeah, but Two Times Creative website, check us out and that's about it. Subscribe to the newsletter if you are a young creative. And as I said, I really do enjoy helping others. So connect with me on LinkedIn, flick me a message, do whatever. I'd gladly help.
I definitely could have used your newsletter back when I was trying to make YouTube videos on my <laughs> own. <laughs> yeah, I've seen your cameras in the corner there. Yeah, they're <laughs> oh, <no>, good. <laughs> To give you context, yeah. Barks hasn't come in the studio yet and he's yeah. just seen the cameras that we're using. They're, they're marvellous. No, they're, they're good. Great to <laughs> work. He, he thinks we're dinosaurs. Uh, <laughs> yes. so. They do the job. They're two yeah. years old. <laughs> Mine's Ancient older than now. that. It's yeah. fine. It's fine. Yeah. Um, luckily, you've got a good editor that can uh, produce yeah, some magic based exactly. on what, he, what he's getting. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, it's right. Well, it's been awesome having you in. Uh, as I said at the start, it's not weird. It's been awesome. Uh, to have you made it weird. I think it was you, <laughs> you were editing this magical podcast. But yeah. um, no, we're really admirers of yours and, and love your content online as well. So we definitely encourage anyone listening to, to give you a follow. And um, yeah, we just love being part of your journey and, and glad that you're you're playing a huge role in ours. So um, thanks again for coming in. And, uh, ter- and terrific to work with for anyone who's uh, thinking about it. Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> no, uh, bloody oath. You need <laughs> content made. This is the man. Yeah, yeah no, I appreciate it. Um, you guys are doing great things. And I think part of um, what well, you actually are part of my history because you will be the first retainer. It's not Melbourne United. It's sports Thank you. Yep. Um, <laughs> But it's been awesome to see what you guys are actually doing properly because I, I, I heard of you, but actually getting an inner sanctum look to what you do is unreal. So... Thanks for having me on as uh, probably your third or fourth backup guest idea. So <laughs> <it's good. laughs> Brilliant. Thanks, Bark. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, it is time now for the people segment of the podcast, Our Sports Grad, where every week we answer a question directly from our community. If you'd like to ask us a question, first become a Sports Grad member on May 14th. Uh, head to our website to join and you can easily add your question to our private Discord server in the channel named Ask Sports Grad. This week, Rubes, our question comes from Ben. Uh, ben has said, I've seen a few jobs come up that I'm really interested in, but I don't tick all the boxes on paper. Should I still apply or just wait until I have all the qualifications? Great question. This is one that we get a lot because there are a lot of people out there who are nervous about putting themselves something forward to where the, re- mm. the chances of being rejected are high. And I understand that that sucks, so why would you go chasing that? But if your ultimate outcome is to get a job within the particular area of the role that's in front of you, then I would advise applying for it regardless of whether you're ready for it now or at some point in the future. The benefit of doing that is if you apply now, you give yourself a chance of actually getting it. So if that becomes a surprise success, like we've just heard with Barks, then amazing, you've achieved your goal. But If you do, in fact, need to build your skills and qualifications, the best way to find out what you are missing is to go directly to the source and find out what am I missing. So if if I was in the latter group, I would still apply for it. I'd go through the interview process should I get there. And if I miss out, I would then ask for for feedback and try and figure out, well, what am I missing? Am I, you know, 50% short? Am I 30% short? What are the very specific things that I need to do this job and now i can create a very clear roadmap to go and build my professional development to come back in the future and and apply again if you don't do that you kind of fly blind in the future trying to think oh, i just need more experience i need more qualifications well how do you know exactly what you need unless you figure out ask the people who are going to hire you so i would always apply because you either get lucky or you learn yeah and they're hiring on potential right yeah it's not always uh you know do they satisfy every single piece of criteria? So just mm. go for it, I say. And Barks is a great example of that. Exactly right. Fantastic. Um, we'll set an episode on this, episode yeah. 147. Uh, it's, it's titled, I'm not qualified, should I apply? Mm. So it's really timely. Uh, yeah. So check that out, Ben. Uh, it's a pretty cool episode. It's a bite-sized episode. So back in the OG days and uh, mm. me and Rose used to jump on and do lonely episodes. It was <laughs> good. Uh, so check that out, episode 147. In the meantime, if you want to ask us a question for the pod or ask our friends in sport a question, sign up and become a member on May 14th. Uh, Being a member gives you access to a network in sport, fortnightly events, career resources, exclusive job boards, and all of our meetup events for free. So get involved and join our waitlist today so you don't miss out. In the meantime, find us on LinkedIn. Give us some love with a rating if you enjoy the show. Send it to your mates as well. Subscribe on Apple or follow on Spotify. Thanks for listening. See you next time.
Hey friends, one last thing before you go. If you really want to make an impact in sport, then subscribe to the Sports Grad newsletter. Inside, we share all the latest job openings and networking events, so you're always aware of opportunities to land a job and grow your network. Plus, we share a Q&A with a professional on how they grow their career in sport. Here, we talk about things like how they moved overseas or negotiated their salary or landed a new job or promotion, made a career change, and so much more. It's kind of like a little boost of inspiration in your inbox before the weekend. So if you're like us, you're career driven and you're keen to progress quickly, you're going to love the Sportsgrad newsletter. To get it, head to sportsgrad.com.au forward slash newsletter to subscribe or follow the link in the show notes. See you next time.